And the actually the uh, sort of the last question in this seg uh, segment I'm going to address to Bob. Uh, we've talked about the general statement about uh, you know the a an age to do this. Is is there a specific, I mean, the patients could say, should I do it now? Is there a particular age? Is there a very specific recommendation of the age at which you do this in a patient with a documented high risk? So there are recommendations and then there's the evidence to support or not support those recommendations and it's very complex. So I think as Warner was saying, um, generally um, either at the completion of childbearing in a, a BRCA1 germline mutation carrier or, or age 35, um, whichever comes later um, would be uh, a standard recommendation. In women with BRCA2 mutations, I think it's been a little bit more lenient because the median age of diagnosis in, in women who do not undergo risk re reducing surgery is typically 10 years later. So some have said age 40. Um, at the same time, the case control studies have really not demonstrated any um, mathematical uh, equation that will really help us uh, decide about uh, what the time is where protection is afforded based on, on an early intervention, how many years before the, ex the anticipated diagnosis uh, would, would confer the highest level of protection. I don't think we know the answer. What do you think? No, I agree. I, don't, I mean, I don't think there's a clear cut point, and so that's why it's very much an individualized decision for each individual woman that gets tested is tested positive, and it's a complex discussion, you know, so. There are some studies that have been looking at the site of mutation, the type of mutation um, in the germline, and the, the penetrance uh, based on disease uh, uh, initiation um, to try to ferret that out, but I think that it's too, still too early to tell and I don't think we can make decisions based on family history in terms of timing uh, and uh, or uh, knowledge about the specifics of the, mut the germline mutation in that family. Would it, would it be fair to say though that for purposes of practical everyday practice that uh, anyone who tests positive for a BRCA mutation should by age 40 have uh, at least given strong consideration to a prophylactic salpingo oil forectomy? I think that that is a reasonable statement. Yeah, I would just close by saying that the, um, as Bob alluded to, the genetics here is actually quite complex. And unfortunately, since they're relatively rare events, we don't have all the data that, that we really would need to make to individualize the decision. Not only are the specific types of mutations probably have different impacts, but there are modifiers within each individual in terms of how that mutation manifests itself. Layer on to that, we now know that there are multiple other genes within the DNA repair pathway that can be mutated. It probably ascribes risk too. Um, and so we need to learn a lot more until um, we're able to really specifically individualize care. You know, and I think to that point, I think it's really important that we link testing with genetic counseling. And I think that's the key piece here. And, you know, in the OBGYN world, pretty much any OBGYN can order testing, but they don't have the mechanism for genetic counseling. And so for us, I mean, I think it's really important for clinicians to provide that piece if they're going to recommend testing at the same time. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's a package. And surgical counseling as well. Agreed.